Maria Kolesnikova, Veronika Tsapkala, and Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya have been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Invite our guest, Mrs. Vyatlana Tsikhanovskaya, leader of the Democratic Belarus, to deliver today's keynote address. Please, madam, thank you. Dear Honorable Rector, Vice Rector, distinguished professors and honorable guests, dear students of Mary Soares promotion, it's a true privilege to open a new academic year at the College of Europe, a renowned institution that prepares future European leaders. I'm honored to stand in front of you today, share my ideas, and most importantly, speak about Belarus. I'm here first and foremost as a Belarusian who wants positive changes for my country. Today, I will tell you three stories. The first one is about true heroes of a new Belarus. Then, I would also like to share a few insights into the foreign policy aspirations of a democratic Belarus. I will conclude with my private story. My country is going through the most serious political, social and humanitarian crisis in its recent history. Belarusians have been living under an autocratic regime for 26 years. And while we had tried to change the status quo before, this summer the people said decisive no to the falsified elections and repressions. This year, Belarus emerged as a freedom-loving European nation and its people as a true heroes. Heroes who fight for justice and their rights. I am proud of the Belarusians' demonstration in incredible heroism every day for over two months. The whole world is impressed and moved by the bravery of the Belarusian people who continue their peaceful protest against violence and the stolen election. They are tired of lies manipulations, propaganda, and disrespect for their dignity. They have a dream of a new democratic Belarus where their rights and freedoms are respected. This is a story of unity, solidarity, and courage. The unity of the whole society in the aspiration for change is evident. Our protest movement is extremely inclusive and diverse, and women play a crucial role in it. The strength and vulnerability of Belarusian women challenge the regime violent rhetoric and methods. Workers, teachers, doctors, scientists, students, they all came together in this strive for change. Solidarity is what makes us so strong. It can be noticed in the acts of everyday heroism, putting out white red white flag, going to a Sunday match, leaning up at a flower shop whose owner has been brutally beaten by the police, standing in a solidary chain, attending court hearings to support the people you have never met before, meeting someone's eyes in the protest crowd and knowing that you are here for the same reason. Our senior citizen also joined the protest. They are an incredible example of courage to the younger generation. One of them is the inspiring Nina Baginskaya, 
who is a real symbol of protest, persistence, and authenticity. People with disabilities demonstrate that their abilities are limitless in the fight of the country and convictions. Belarusians are protesting despite the fear of being injured, fired, expelled from the country, and even murdered. Thousands have been detained for peacefully expressing their views. Hundreds have been tortured and mutilated. Nevertheless, within a week after the election, around 200,000 people marched in the streets of Minsk under our white, red, white flag. And every Sunday since, thousands demand their constitutional right to freely elect the leader to be respected. We want to decide the future of our country and choose our representative on the international stage. While several opposition leaders were forced to leave country, including myself, and others were arrested on fabricated charges, every Belarusian stepped up to become a leader and a hero in their own right. This year's presidential campaign was like no other, marked by unprecedented level of civil engagement. Many tried to become members of local election commission to make sure that the due process was followed. However, fewer than 1% of independent members were registered. Many tried to become independent observers, but the regime put various hurdles in place to prevent them from carrying out their duties. Then several initiatives, such as independent exit polls and digital platforms, emerged to ensure an alternative vote count. Based on their data, we can confidently say that the announced election results have nothing in common with the reality. The, si the system cynically stole people's votes. The events taking place at the moment do not, do not mirror the election results published by the Central Election Commission. Someone who received more than 80% of votes doesn't need to organize a secret inauguration or get a photo op with a rifle. Someone who received 80% support does not need to, does not need to use lethal weapons and brutal force to win people's hearts and minds. Someone who received 80% vote would be warmly welcomed by the majority of the population and would, and would publicly celebrate his victory. Election and referenda in Belarus haven't been recognized as free and fair since 1996 referendum. This is when the Constitution was amended and powers were redistributed in favor of the President. The unconstitutional referendum eliminated all meaningful political competition and excluded the opposition from the decision-making. The regime truly believed that the sixth term, sixth term will follow the same template of falsifications and it will be enough to secure its stability. However, the new generation of Belarusians has emerged in the meantime. They cannot be easily deterred by the regime. They have access to various sources of information and they want to partic participate in the political life of their homeland. They are heroes of a new democratic Belarus. This new generation, the Belarusian students, fight, fight every day for their freedom and future in spite of detentions, humiliation, and threats of expulsion. Unfortunately, academic freedom is not respected in Belarus. All the university rectors are appointed by the head of state, and the student self-governance is practically non-existent. In Belarus, you can be expelled from the university because of your political views. 
Your favorite professors can be fired because they do not share their state ideology and this system doesn't tolerate, tolerate alternative opinions. In Belarus, you can be detained because you are marching, singing, sitting on the stairs of your university or clapping as a sign of protest. You can lose your place in the student residence if you do not participate in early voting or if you support an alternative political force. In Belarus, students learn to be a brick in the wall instead of asking inconvenient questions. We are proud of our students who love their country. And despite all of this, every day, organize solidarity protests to support the movement and a better future for Belarus. Belarusian uprising is a pro-Belarusian movement that doesn't put the geopolitical choice of our country at its core. All Belarusians cherish the sovereignty and ind independence of our country as our most important values. We would like to maintain friendly relations with all our neighbors and international partners. The cooperation between a democratic Belarus and the EU will be based on our shared values of rule of law, democracy, and respect for human dignity and equality. The democratic Belarus and the EU will be able to move forward in our cooperation in all the areas including political, economic, and cultural. Belarus needs to diversify its foreign policy in order to increase its strategic autonomy and independence. Today's policy doesn't any longer serve the national interest of the country. Instead, it serves the personal interest of one individual to preserve the power by all means. For many years, Belarusian autocratic rule has been the main obstacle to a harmonious development of the EU-Belarus relations. The legal framework is still governed by the outdated agreement concluded between the USSR and the European community more than 30 years ago. Is this the Belarus can do? Is this the best the EU can do? Belarusians definitely deserve better. The ambitions of one person and a small group of elites to stay in power shouldn't deprive the whole nation of development constructive relations with its neighbors and strategic partners. Today's Belarus is not the same as 10 years ago. Belarusians are tired of being warned against external enemies and color revolutions. They want to build a new democratic country viewed as a reliable international partner. The country where diplomats will not be forced to leave the service because they condemn the violence or refuse to accept the falsified election results. The country where a leader is bound by the people's will. The Netherlands campus specializes in the EU neighborhood policy. The experience of transition that Central and Eastern European countries went through is extremely relevant for Belarus. That's why it's very important that Belarusian students study at the College of Europe. Dear Belarusians, please remember that in a new democratic Belarus, your knowledge of European policies, your analytical skills, uh, and your passion for the European idea will be highly demanded. We want you to work for the betterment of our country. It's our duty to create conditions back home so that each person's potential and talent can blossom. And I will finish with my personal story. 
Maybe not all of you know, but it all began this spring when my beloved husband, Sergei Tikhanovsky, was excluded from the presidential race and later imprisoned. I felt compelled to stand up for him and decided to run in his place. I didn't have any political experience or ambition. I didn't have a conventional base or the reputation required for entering politics. I wasn't even sure that I would have enough strength or courage to go through with the campaign. But I had no choice. I had to do it for Sergei and for my country. I was allowed to run for president only because I was viewed by the regime as an unlikely competitor. However, I was joined by two admirable strong women, Maria Kolesnikova and Veronika Tsipkala, and we showed the regime that they were mistaken. Maria and Veronika represented two alternative candidates, Viktor Babarika and Valery Tsipkala, who were not allowed to compete for the presidential office, like my husband. Together with these brave women, we rallied across the country. An incredible number of Belarusians supported us and gave us inspiration to go forward. They were our main motivation to continue, despite all the challenges and threats from the authorities. We were running against the system that had mastered the art of manipulating public opinion and election rigging. The system that is used to oppressing the freedom of speech and depriving its opponents of fair campaign opportunities. The system that practices arrests and detentions of opposition candidates and eliminates its most popular opponents. The system where all the branches of power are subordinate to one person and where the parliament is composed of hand-picked regime supporters who do not care to defend the interests of people. The system where personal loyalty to authorities is valued higher than professionalism and skills, where torture can be used to silence the whole country. And while there are 500 documented cases of torture, not a single investigation into police violence has been launched. The system that seemed unbeatable for almost three decades, but is now falling apart under the pressure of peaceful protest. This election campaign also became my story on personal transformation from a wife, mother and teacher into a symbol of the awoken Belarus that wants freedom and justice. I am deeply touched and honored that my personal story, full of struggles, inspired so many Belarusians across the country. I have only one piece of advice to give you based on my personal experience. Do things you love and out of love, out of true conviction and dedication. Go forward regardless of your fear or what others might say. Sometimes our lack of experience and preconvinced ideas can be our main asset. Often we tend to underestimate our inner strength and ability to learn new things and adapt. You never know what future might have in store for you. You never know how many people's lives you might be able to touch and change apart from your own. I would also like to ask you be on the side of people of Belarus through these hard times. Talk about Belarus with your families and friends. It's never enough. Write research papers about our country. Engage with politicians on the situation in Belarus. Join solidarity protests with your fellow students. You can also 
put in place your own initiatives to support the Belarusian civil society. The history is being, made, is being made in the Belarusian streets, and you can become a part of this story and make your voice heard wherever you are. Dear students of College of Europe, freedom is the main European value. Please cherish every single moment of the freedom this institution gives to you. This freedom shouldn't be taken for granted. This is something thousands are fighting for in the neighboring Belarus. You have an opportunity to learn from the most prominent professors. You will also learn about other cultures and countries from your fellow students. I believe in you. You can build bridges between different nations. The future of Europe in your hands. Long live Europe. Long live Belarus.